Well, back at home, the Congressional Executive Commission on China holding a hearing on what it calls corporate complicity of subsidizing the Chinese Communist Party's human rights violations. Well, our next guest was one of the top witnesses on the Hill today, human rights advocate and former NBA basketball player and his cancer freedom. Listen to what he said. We created the shoes as non-slave labor, and we put all these messages on our shoes, which there was no rule against us because three years ago when we were, we were in NBA bubble, all the players were putting on their shoes, Black Lives Matter, Black Revolution, George Floyd, which I'm not against. So my first topic was free Tibet. Before the game, there was two gentlemen from Boston Celtics came to me and said, take your shoes off. I talk about the problems that are happening in Turkey for the last 10 years. All I got was support, but the topic was China one day and my phone was ringing once every hour. I got released and I, it was over for me. I love basketball. I'm, my job is not, the, I'm not a politician. It's bigger than myself. It's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than NBA. And I will continue to be, you know, a voice of all those innocent people out there. And his cancer freedom joins me now. Um, thanks so much for being here. Ha boy, you, you say you're not a politician, but you were testifying on Capitol Hill. So <laughs> maybe not a former, a former basketball player, but there you are testifying Capitol Hill. You know, you tweeted earlier today about the importance of exposing the quote, dirty relationship yeah. um, uh, between the NBA and China. And this goes, I think, to what you were talking about when you had those shoes. I remember that controversy when all that went down and then you released, um, and it continues to this day. What else did you tell um, the committee when you were on Capitol Hill today? Tell us more about that. Thank you for having me. I mean, I really wanted to expose the relationship between NBA and China because NBA just keep bragging about how much they care about the social justice issues. And, you know, they many players actually call themselves more than an athlete and stuff until it hits their pocket. You know, as soon as the, the, the things that they talk about affects their business, they're going to stop uh, talking about them. So I wanted to expose that, uh, expose that. And also, you know, NBA biggest sponsor, Nike, you know, they they say they are for the people in America, they stand with Black Lives Matter, no Asian hate, LGBTQ community, Latino community. But when it comes to China, I mean, everybody knows about the sweatshop. So I really want to thank the you know U.S. Congress and also the Senate. It was a bipartisan effort, and I wanted to really testify in front of the whole whole world and and see what MB is doing because Adam Silver, the commissioner, literally exporting this Americana to an evil empire, and it is unacceptable. And all the players are unfortunately scared to say anything because they know as soon as they say anything about the China's human rights violation, their career will be over. Do you, do you think that'll change that hypocrisy that you're talking about? Do, do you think the NBA will change its policies with that? Or do you see this just continuing on the same way that it has and the problems that mm -hmm. you've faced? I mean, that's what we, we are fighting for. You know, don't we always say, don't just talk about it, be about it. I had many conversations with the member of the Congress and they said the next, we will be inviting Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA. We will be inviting the MBPA, the Player Association, and we will be inviting the CEO of uh, Nike because enough is enough. You know, we have to, we cannot just let in these American, 100% American -made companies bowing down to uh, at the biggest dictatorship in the world. China. So I actually cannot wait for Adam Silver to testify, the, the Player Association to testify, the CEO, CEO of Nike to testify, because if they have nothing to hide, they will come and do it. And when I had a conversation, they said, we don't really know if they will be even willing to come and uh, testify in front of us. Well, well, they, Congress could put pressure on them to come in and testify, and, and there's nothing like, you know, pressure from Congress uh, to, to get the dialogue going. Um, real quick, I want to pivot to the NATO summit. You, you've been very outspoken um, about, you know, President Erdogan, uh, his leadership, Turkey's history of human rights abuses. This past week, we've seen Erdogan tilt more towards the West, which is now uh, considering selling F-16s to Turkey. He's supporting expanding NATO membership. He also welcomed President Zelensky uh, in Istanbul. But on the flip side, he's had a long partnership with Vladimir Putin. The two have uh, agreed to arms and energy deals. What are your biggest concerns in all this? Are you concerned about, you know, us, the United States, working more closely with, uh, with Erdogan and his administration? 
I mean, first of all, uh, everybody knows that he is a dictator. Um, and I just, it just really breaks, breaks my heart how the Biden administration can still be soft on some of these dictatorships out there, like China, like Turkey. And when it comes to Erdogan, he plays the both sides. I mean, he's going there meeting with Zelensky and saying he supported Ukraine, but at the same time, he's opened his doors to Russian oligarchs. He is shaking hands with, you know, the pol the, the leaders like Putin, the leaders like Khomeini, Iran, and leaders like Xi Jinping. And people are confused, like, which side are you on? Um, th those meetings in NATO obviously was very important, but I am very skeptical about Erdogan's uh, true in intentions because he will always want to empower his hand against West by using these roles, which he always did. Uh, unfortunately, our administration is very soft on the uh, Erdogan regime, so we got to be uh, tougher on them. Well, and you had a bounty on your head. Uh, quick final question. Do, do you still have that half million dollar bounty on your head? Yeah. I mean, even every time I wow. leave the country, I have to let the FBI know where I'm going. Uh, that is the one thing I'm a actually asking our administration. How can a foreign government can put a, a bounty on U.S. citizen head and you in American soil. Like, this is unacceptable. Hmm. Um, it is what it is, you know, I'm just, I know that I'm not a bad person. I am talking about the human rights violations and political prisoners in Turkey. Hey, oh well, that shows that they're so scared. Yeah. Well, Anis Kent, for freedom, we appreciate you. Fighting for freedom Oops. around the world and justice. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Great talking to you and we hope to have you on again.